Hello everyone, I'm going to be working on annotated bibliographies today. So as you can see on my computer, I have an annotated bibliography with a primary source and secondary source listed. If you don't have something that looks like this, go ahead and pause my video and make one. If you're some of my students, I recommend using Google Docs. Again, go ahead and pause if you need to, otherwise if you already have one, go ahead and find it. So we're going to go ahead and make a annotated bib. I'm going to show you how this works and kind of the overall structure of what it needs to look like. So we're going to go into here. Um, you should also recognize this. If you don't have it open or you don't know what this look is or where to find it, please let me know. Just pause the video and come in and get me. Um, but I will also put it in the video description so you should be able to find it pretty easily. So this is about, it's called citing your sources. It basically goes into how to create a actual source um, citation. So I tell my students, you know, just paste all your stuff into a bibliography first. And so your bibliography might have a lot of things in it. Like you might already have a lot of websites and secondary sources. Right now mine is empty, but I am going to show you how you can do it. So we are in here. Um, you know, this is a, I'll just kind of go over this stuff real quick. First link's a warning about plagiarism. If you want to read it, you can. But basically, you can't take any work that's not yours and claim it's yours. That's what plagiarism is. So if you don't really feel like you can understand that concept, go ahead and just click that link and read it. You can pause my video while you do. Um, I got some example bibliography stuff here. So a couple of these links are mostly just ways to help you. These two links I'm highlighting right now. They just talk about how you can basically create a bibliography, and they have a couple examples on there. This bibliography right here is an example of a large bibliography. This is actually from my master's thesis. So this is the paper, or this is the, um, the research I had to do to earn my master's in history. So if you scroll down, you'll see I got my primary sources on top. And you know, at my level, you have to, you know, it's recommended or to organize them based on other things. You don't need to. So you don't need to actually make like a section for articles, a section for collections. But this is what a bibliography should look like. You can see mine's pretty detailed, pretty long. Got my interviews right there. And then I have my section for secondary sources too. Again, a lot more articles. If I scroll down, you'll get into the dissertations. Yeah, books eventually. Um, that's actually what monographs is, is, the books. And so I have quite a bit. And once you get to my level of research, it's basically what you want. So that's an example. Go ahead and click out of that. And at any time you want to pause my video to explore more of those things, feel free. Alright, so if you've researched all you want and looked at it, we're going to go on and actually talk about what it means to actually create a citation. So citations are basically the information organized from the source. And there's a lot of different kinds of sources and each kind has its own type of citation. I'm going to try to make it as easy for you as possible, but bibliogra bibliographies do take a lot of work. Um, you know, once you get good at it, it almost becomes mindless. You just kind of plug things in. But in the beginning, a bibliography is kind of hard to master just because there is so many of these little details and rules that don't seem like they should like matter. But once you get to you know a high level, you kind of start realizing how important they are. So again, it's going to be you know boring. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, but it is very important because it helps people do two things. First of all, it helps prove to people that you've actually done the research, that you've actually have gone through your topic and are a master of your topic. So it's just kind of a calling card saying to people like, hey, look at me. I've done this research. I know what I'm talking about. It's also a really good way for people to take your research and um, borrow it. You know, I tell my students all the time that they should go out and find research that they can borrow. So someday, um, sometime you might do research and people are like, hey, that's a cool topic. I should look at their research and borrow it so I can do my own research and add to it. That's actually what we do in college at the graduate level and even eventually the doctorate level. We try to add to each other's knowledge. So when I'm writing papers or books, I'm actually borrowing other books from people, borrowing what they've done, picking it up where they left off, and furthering the knowledge. So, they are important, although I will not lie, it is very boring in the beginning, but it's a skill that's very worth it, especially if you're planning on going to college. So, we're going to go ahead and start. Um, you can see here it says most used sources for citations, so we're going to just focus on the ones that are the most used, okay? So, first book, um, we see a lot of books being used. So, we have this thing right here, it says last name, comma, first name. So, we actually want to figure out the uh, first and last name. I'm just actually going to grab a book from my little personal library here. To kind of use a real life example, try to find a history book. How about that? Be even better, right? There we go. That one's good. This one's called Battle A History of Combat and Culture from Ancient Greece to Modern Times. 
So I'm going to source this book. So say this is a book I use for my own research, okay? So I see right here, the first thing I need to do is last name and first name of author. So that's what I'm going to focus on. And this is a book. This is not something that came from the time period. So it would be a secondary source. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to write the name. person's name is Lynn, comma, John A. Okay, pretty simple. So going back to my stuff right here. That makes sense. I got the title. And you can see an example here says Judith Steam. That's a different example. So uh, next is title of the book, and it's in italics. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Going into here, you see this italics button I'm hovering over with my mouse. We can click on that. You also can go control I, and that will make it italics. And this one book is called Battle. And we'll do a colon, a history of combat and culture from ancient Greece to modern America. Okay. And again, I double check. I need a period after my italics. I'll do that. Next says place of publication. So this is actually the place where the book was published. So this is where the publisher. You don't really have to go into the book itself now. Um, it generally is in within the first couple pages. So I will look for it. Um, what we do is we look for the thing called copyright. This is going to be kind of hard. I'll do my best to show you. I don't know if the camera will really pick it up. But you kind of see where it says copyright right next to my finger. It says copyright 2003 by Westview Press. That's what we're looking for. So Westview Press is the name of the publisher. So as we can see, what we're looking for, though, is the place of publication. So we need to find out where they actually are out of. So you got to have to do a little reading sometimes. Um, I'm reading here, though, that they are in Boulder, Colorado. So I'll actually write Boulder. And you can do Colorado. And then we go back to make sure we're doing this right. It looks like we need a colon now. So do a colon. And then the next one was publisher. And remember, our publisher was Westview Press. So we'll type in Westview Press. Going back. We need a comma now in the year of publication. So this is the year the book was made. And we saw earlier that the copyright was 2003. So we'll go 2003. And that's it. That is how you do a citation. Um, one more important thing about citations too, and this is again, it's one of those little nitpicky things that you have to do. Um, citations need to be indented on the second line. So for example, I have two lines here. I need to go like that. So that's what it should look like every single time. If you had multiple lines, so you had three lines, I'll just make up some stuff. You actually need to indent that line too. So the first line is not indented, the second line is. If you don't know how to do that, just ask me, but you can just use the tab button for the most part. Um, and that can help you out. So I'll get rid of that other stuff so you can see what it actually should look like. 2003 again. Okay, that's it. That is a citation for a book. Okay. So that'll be it for that one. We'll go ahead and go back. Where's my mouse? Here we are. So next one, periodical. Um, we got into an actual newspaper now. I don't know if I have. Oh, I actually do have a New York Times right here, I think. Oh, I have a, yep, I have a Time Magazine right here. So I have a Time Magazine. This is what a periodical could be. A periodical is anything um, that is like periodical means it comes out periodically. So it comes out like once a week, once a day, once a month. So in the case of a magazine, a lot of times these come out, you know, once a week or once a month. A newspaper would come out every day for the most part. Um, that's a periodical. Periodicals have articles inside of them. And so we're going to do that one now. Okay. So go ahead and go into here. Again, secondary source. So you guys can look into this. See where it says periodical. We got last name, first name. So here's the deal, you can't cite the entire periodical. Most of the time you're only using one article inside of it. So what you have to do is you actually have to look for the actual article. So I'm just gonna find one real quick. Okay, that way I can kind of show you. Okay. Um, so I got one here, it's called A Government by Too Few. That's gonna be the article name. So let's go ahead and start. It's written by somebody named Molly Jane. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in Jane Molly, period. Um, going into that now. Let's see. Now we have to have the article title. So we go quote, because article titles are always put in quotation marks, okay? So we'll say a government by too few. 
And we'll go ahead and hit quote, just like that. So that's all we have to do for that. And then we have to go title of the periodical. So now we gotta go into the actual name of the thing. It's called Times, this is Time Magazine. So we'll just do this, go Time, nice and easy. And it wants us to do, what does it want us to do? A period, in, oh, I messed up. Where am I at? Oh, I'm sorry, we do a, uh, we do a comma. So we do a comma, see, even though I've been doing this for years, I still forget, so it's always good to double check yourself. Um, we'll go issue number and date. The issue number sometimes can be hard to find, but a lot of times it's just on the front page. I'm actually not seeing one on this one. Sometimes they don't have an issue number. Sometimes they're on the back, but this one might not have one. Interesting. Oh, here we go. I found it. So this is, this is what the issue number is. They look different sometimes, so if you can't find it, let me know. But go volume 193 number four through five. Okay, and that is the issue number. And then we're still down here and we need to put the date in parentheses. And so we'll do that And 2019. Sometimes you can put the month if you know the month. So in this case I do, so I could put February 2019. Again, this is just helping people find the information and shows them that you know what you're talking about. Um, and then we got page numbers of the specific article that you use. This is very important. You actually have to tell them where you got your page numbers for, or where you got your information from. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and find that article again. It is on page 17 and it goes to page 21. So I would say 17-21. Oops, not seven, 17. Okay, that's it. So again, you can kind of see, you do need to indent on that second line. So hopefully you're starting to see why this is boring. <laughs> it takes a long time and it's kind of aggravating. Like I'm, you know, I'm a professional at this. So for me, it's not so bad. Like I can kind of just plug these things in, but this is aggravating. So my, here's my recommendation. If you have a group, spend time with your group doing this. Um, everyone in the group should be working on this and helping because um, it does take a long time. I'm gonna show you um, how to do one more primary source and then I'm gonna show you uh, actually what an annotation is now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a primary source real quick. We're gonna skip web source. Hopefully by now you're figuring it out. Just use these things. Um, as long as you use my examples, you should be able to figure it out, but please let me know if you can't. If you're just like really confused as to what to do, let me know. Um, let's go ahead. So we got things on here like photograph. Um, here's the deal, primary sources sometimes can be very hard to find. I don't really know if I have a good example laying around on my desk anywhere, I don't seem to. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna go to Google. I'm gonna just find a random primary source real quick. Just kind of show you what it must, something might look like. So I have a student doing the Battle of Lexington. So we'll just do that one. So we've got Lexington and we're gonna type in primary sources. That should get us to something here pretty quickly. In this case, Gilder Lerman. Actually, we're gonna go back. We're gonna use Library of Congress because they're, they normally have a lot of good information. So we'll go to Library of Congress. So I'll take a second to load. Here we go. So it says the American Revolution, 1763 to 1783, first shots of war. A British officer at Lexington and Concord, April 19th, 1775. Okay, so we don't need to read the entire thing, but this, say this is the primary source we're gonna use. Um, going back to our examples, you know, we don't, I don't have every single primary source you could possibly use. Like I have photographs and personal writings, so that's the most popular one. Um, but right here I have how you can actually do letters. So if we click into them, you guys can use them. Again, if you don't have a primary source though, if you have no idea how to do it, let me know and I can help you. Um, so here we says a, a print letter, a letter in print, a letter found in a subscription database, a letter found on a website. This is what I want because this is where I found it. So you can kind of see here it says bibliography. That's what we're making. So this is what we would use. Now they're giving us just the example. They're not actually giving us the rule. So this is where it can kind of be confusing. So you're gonna have to use your head and actually figure this out. So I'll show you. So we know that the Eleanor Roosevelt, that's probably who like actually wrote the letter. So we're gonna look who wrote this letter. It says a British officer at Lexington and Concord. Following entries from the Atlantic Monthly are from a diary kept by a British army officer. Um, so we don't actually know who it is it looks like. So if we go all the way down to the bottom, there's no signature. So this is a really good example because you're not always gonna get the author. This is what I tell people to do. If you don't know who the author is, at least describe them. So we know it's a British officer who was at Lexington and Concord. So this is how I would write this. I would say a, oops, here we go. A British officer 
who was at Lexington and Concord. Okay, and then I pit a period. And again, it's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Going back, we're still down here. Letter found on website. Um, it says in bibliography, Eleanor Roosevelt to Brest Terman, April 25th, 1945. So right here, this is like who is writing it and to who and the date. So that's all we have to do. So um, a British officer at Lexington and Concord. It was kept in a diary. So it's not really a letter. It's more of a diary. So we could actually write that too. We will go into here and let's see. Was that italicized? Where am I at? No, it's not, it's not italicized, so we don't need to italicize it either. Okay, so we'll go a diary of a British officer. Okay, again, period. And as you can see, I'm, not, I'm just pulling this information out of the primary source. I'm just using my head and like, all right, well, it is a, you know, a diary of a British officer. That's all I need to say. If you can't find the information, just make it up based off what you're looking at. Use your head, use some inference. Um, we need the date. So it says right here, April 19th, 1775. Looking at how the style was, there's a comma right here, it looks like. Am I right? Yep. It's a comma. So we'll go comma, April, what was that date again? 19th, 1775. We'll put a period. Next one, in Eleanor and Harry, comma, correspondence of Eleanor Roosevelt and Harry S. Truman, edited by Steve Neal. So this is probably where they found the information, so we need to do the same thing. Where did we find this information? Um, it says here, doesn't really tell us, oh here we go, it says the following entries from the Atlantic Monthly are from a diary kept by a British Army officer. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this part. We're going to look how they worded that. They said in Eleanor and Harry. Okay, so you guys see how they worded it? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to just paste that right in there. And we're going to say in a... Atlantic Monthly. We're gonna fix. We're gonna make sure this all looks exact same. So if you copy and paste, remember everything needs to look the exact same. So I'll go 12. We'll get rid of the highlights, and then that's it. So we'll say this doesn't look right. Oh, it's because it's italicized. Get rid of that. And then make sure everything is Times New Roman. Which everything apparently wasn't. Okay. So, in Atlantic Monthly, Volume 39, Issue 234, April 1877, period. And then going in, they have a website URL. So, we'll do this. We'll go into here, copy, and paste. Again, it is a primary source, so we need to do that. And we need to do this again. And one more time. That's it. So, here's the deal. Again, I know bibliographies are not fun. This is boring. We're already at 17 minutes, which, you know, it kind of shows you how long these things can take. I just did three sources basically in 17 minutes, so you do need to take your time and go through these. And unfortunately, we're not even done yet, so I'm going to show you the last step that you have to do. Every bibliography, you need to do this. You need to answer this question next to on the bottom of each one, and I will highlight it in yellow so you can really see it. It's this question. How did this source... help you understand your topic or how did it help you prove your thesis so two questions really so how did this source help you understand your topic you put a question mark there or how did it help you prove your thesis you need to answer that I would say always between two to three sentences for every single one so you gotta have two to three sentences for every single one. That's it, you just need to explain how it worked. Um, the more specific you can be, the better. And that's gonna be one of the last writing assignments you do. So again, annotated bibliography is not fun, but very necessary if you're gonna be a good researcher. Um, I know this is not gonna answer every question. I know there's probably gonna be a lot of confusion. So here's the deal. At any moment you need help, you need to pause the video, you need to come talk to me. Um, bring it up to your teacher if you're somebody else when you're a student watching this but for the most part please be asking for help there's a lot of other resources too if you go back to that other document we were in you don't need to write your bibliography in here but you do need to use these other examples and again the more you can ask of me the more I can help you out okay um, last little tip if you want to try to be more self-sufficient go to Google and if you really do want to like kind of take care of this yourself and learn how to do this yourself, I'm going to give you the ultimate trick. Go to Chicago, type in Chicago style.
type in Chicago style citation. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to type in the kind of source you're looking at. So let's use a source we haven't talked about. So we'll say photograph. So we'll say Chicago style citation photograph. So you got a bunch of photos. You very see up here it says how to cite a photo in Chicago Turabian. Easy bid blog. If we click on that, we should get to a good website that'll tell us how to do it. Um, you know, use the information like right here tells you, and I'll highlight it. It says last first name, photograph a title, month date, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I know some of you can be very self-sufficient. Some of you are going to need more help. But if you want to try to do this by yourself, that's my ultimate piece of advice. Just Google it and try to figure it out. And otherwise, email me or come talk to me, okay? That is it for this video, though. Uh, good luck with this. We're at minute 20, so I know this is going to take a while. But again, if you have questions, please let me know. Take care, guys. Bye.